Gigi edits vodka pasta went viral everywhere. And you know why? Because it's smooth and spicy, just like you are. Ingredients. The base is extra virgin olive oil, onions and crushed garlic. We add tomato paste and a little vodka to bind it all together. Now add your cream and get your pasta going. I love that Gigi used chili peppers. It was the perfect addition. Salt and a scrunch of pepper and we are ready for the pasta. The final flavors come from adding butter and Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Pasta water combines everything with pure passion and love. As you're plating this dish, whisper sweet nothings to it. Just gorgeous. Let's make the viral baked feta pasta. It's super easy. All you do is add cherry tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, salt, and freshly cracked pepper to a baking dish and toss to combine. Then add a block of feta cheese to the center, drizzle with more olive oil, and crack some more fresh pepper over top. Then pop in a 400 degree oven for 35 minutes. And all you have to do is stir it all up. All those juices from the tomatoes come out. The feta becomes nice and creamy. Add some fresh garlic, some fresh basil. Your pasta of choice, I chose orecchietti and give it one last stir to combine. This was so easy, so delicious, perfect for weeknight dinners. Apparently this recipe was so popular from TikTok that they literally ran out of feta at grocery stores in Finland, which is where the recipe originated. I am 100% gonna make this again, and I really wanna try it with goat cheese. Enjoy this one, guys. So the first thing that I made in my new kitchen is this creamy, dreamy alabredo that comes together in under 30 minutes. Basically, if you'd love your home to smell like garlic and parmesan, then make this. First thing we're gonna do is melt down our butter, add the garlic, saute it, then add heavy cream, salt, black pepper, Italian seasoning, and just a dash of nutmeg. For my favorite part, we're gonna make it rain parmesan and then add in some cream cheese, which I was very skeptical about, but then I tried it and I get it. Once the pasta is cooked to perfection, toss it in the sauce along with tons of fresh parsley. Mix that all together and of course, don't forget to add more cheese on top and our last step is to enjoy. This is one of my favorite weeknight dinners or a dinner for solo nights. First, put tomatoes in a pan with olive oil and let them heat until they blister and then use the back of a spoon to crush the tomatoes so they burst completely and release their juices. Next, stir a little bit and let the sauce reduce. Add salt, pepper, red pepper flakes, Italian seasoning, and garlic. Taste for seasoning. Stir again and reduce by just a little bit. Add your pasta. Stir. Add Parmesan cheese. Then a couple of tablespoons of your pasta water. Stir again so everything is incorporated and makes a silky smooth creamy sauce. Plate it up as much as you can fit in your bowl. And finish with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Hey Rodo, what should we make for dinner today? Let's make an oven baked spaghetti. Okay, I could get down with that. Tell me more. So we're gonna do uncooked spaghetti, marinara, onion, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning or oregano. Oh, yes, that's a great idea. And then cover it with water so that way it can obviously cook. Yes, but we have to mix it really well to make sure that the spaghetti noodles don't stick, stick together. together. Yes, and then cover it and then bake it. Yeah, and then halfway through we'll mix it just to make sure it doesn't stick. Okay, I like that idea. And then after that, we gotta add a topping. We can't just leave it like this. Uh, mozzarella cheese, hello. Yes, okay, I'm I'm so for this. And then rebake it, so then what happens? So it'll get nice and like bubbly and it'll yes. be mm, mm, mm. Yes, I like that idea. Okay, let's twirl this spaghetti. And, and get this, out. oh my God. Yes. Talk about easy, delicious, and so damn good. Yes. yes. Today I'm making penne alla vodka in one pan.
pan. We are pouring tomato puree and pasta into a pan. No boiling water, none of that. We are now going to pour in our milk and our heavy cream. Now I'm gonna add in our garlic. Then you'll add in your red chili flakes. Over here we have our tomato paste. This is going to give us even more deep tomato -y flavor in there. Penel vodka is called penel vodka for a reason. We are going to add in our vodka. Now do not worry, there's gonna be no alcohol when this is done. It is all gonna be cooked out into oblivion. There is olive oil. Of course, we're not searing anything, but olive oil is a primary flavor of penel vodka. We're going to take our Parmesan cheese and let's just grate it into there. We're going to grate in our Parmesan, some freshly cracked pepper and salt. Now we're just going to stir that up and check this out. Look at this. Now, this might look weird right now. It's gonna be this like kind of pinky sauce, but I'm now going to bring this to a gentle simmer. All right, it has now been about 25 minutes. I've been cooking this down and look at that. Mmm, oh God. Ah, rega, questa è da paura. Ingredienti. Iniziamo subito rosolando la cipolletta, quantità a sentimento, con l'olio prettamente extravergine, proprio come te. Poi aggiungo i pisellini, quelli piccoli, un pizzico di sale, una macinata di pepe e una bella mestolata di acqua di cottura. Una volta cotti, rimuoveteli, frullateli e setacciateli. Aggiungete un altro po' d'acqua e poi versateci la pasta. Questa si cucinerà direttamente nella crema. Aggiungete acqua di cottura quanto basta, fino a che la pasta è al dente. Ora sbattete un ovetto con il pecorino e un po' di parmigiano e unite al tutto per gli ultimi minuti di cottura della pasta. Mi pasta carbonara. Ponemos el agua a calentar, echamos el aceite, echamos sal y ahora ponemos la pasta. Cortamos la panceta en bastones, calentamos la sartén y doramos la panceta. Sacamos las yemas, las ponemos en un bol. Batimos queso pecorino y mezclamos. Cuando la pasta está cocida, la mezclamos con la panceta. Un poquito de agua. Añadimos poco a poco la mezcla. Si queda muy gorda la salsa, vamos añadiendo agua. Nos tiene que quedar muy cremoso. Pimienta negra. Vas a flipar con. If you want all the garlic, it is in this pasta. You want to start by roasting up your garlic first. Peel an entire bulb of garlic. Yes, an entire bulb. Drizzle with some olive oil and sea salt. I cooked mine in the air fryer on 350 for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to blend that in a blender with some olive oil and set aside. Slice up some fungus, add some oil to a pan. Then you're going to toss in your mush and saute for about five minutes until nice and tender. Add some chopped spinach and continue cooking, maybe about one to two minutes. Then you're going to deglaze with some white wine. I'm just using some cheap white wine. It doesn't really matter. Add in your garlic mush, and then you're going to mix that until very well combined. Once that's combined and it's cooked for like three minutes, add in about half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Then you're going to season with some salt, and I used Aleppo pepper. Then I added in some Parmigiano Reggiano and more spinach. Cook that down until it wilts, and then I added in my pasta with a little bit of pasta water, and y'all, this is the most delicious pasta. I'm going to show you the easiest pasta ever. So, very tomato-y, okay? We've got the cherry tomatoes and olive oil. We have tomato paste and passata. And canned tomatoes, okay? Even the best chefs use canned tomatoes. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> they're the best. I'm also adding some okra, but you can leave that out. I just like it. Also, boil your water before you pour it in. It makes it cook way faster. I have this garlic. Look how big it is. It's huge. Okay, I'm going to chop the garlic and the onion. Just like this. And this is the pasta I'm cooking. Look how cool it is. Oh my god. Okay, while that's cooking, I'm going to make the sauce. So I cook the cherry tomatoes until they're like this. And then I just put them to the side in a bowl. Then into the same pan, I put some olive oil. And now I'm putting the onion and garlic. And just let that infuse the oil for a second. And then I put in the canned tomatoes. And the passata. And some tomato paste. Now I've added some salt and pepper. And I'm going to add some onion powder as well. And some dried basil leaves. Fuck, I said this was easy, sorry. And then you mix that all together. And because the tomatoes were canned, they're going to squish down really easily and just turn into a sauce. See? You just squish them. <laughs> then I'm going to add a whole bag of baby spinach. We have fresh basil outside, but I'm too scared to get it. We'll go together, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's here. Look how big it is, by the way. So I'm just going to pick some from the garden. <laughs> About this much. Wash it. Okay, I chopped it. And then we add it. Oh my god, look at me. I'm a chef. What the frick? Then we add the tomatoes from earlier. I'm going to add the okra too, but you don't have to. And all the pasta, which is very heavy. And here it is. God. Atis is very excited. I've made this before. It's absolutely delicious. You love it, Atis? It's very good. It's possible. Yeah. So that's it.
that's how you make it. If you ever see yummy pasta on my story, that's how it's made, okay? Delicious, amazing. Put in the effort to make it. I know it's like a little bit tedious, like cutting and chopping, but it's worth it, okay? Because I'm a chef, that's why I know how to cook. Up. Let's make pasta in a wheel of Parmesan. Score the cheese. Now wedge in your knife. Crack it open, dig it out, then light it on fire. Big giant sprinkle of salt. In goes our pasta. Now toss in your pasta. Now you add the sauce. And a little bit of pepperoni. Now that's the perfect pasta. Oh my god! That's insane. It's so good. I'm feeling extra Italian today, so... Today for a little dinner idea, we're making creamy lemon pasta with lemon crusted chicken. We're going to begin by cutting our chicken breast in half, and then we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and pound it down. It's going to help tenderize it as well as help the chicken cook evenly. Now it's time to prepare our coating. I'll have everything displayed on the screen for you guys, but we're basically going to take our thinly sliced chicken and dip it into our flour, our egg mixture, and then into our panko. We're going to fry our chicken breast in about an inch of oil just to give it color, so on medium heat for about 2 minutes on each side, and then we're going to pop it in the oven at 400 for about 8 to 10 minutes to finish cooking. Here I am sauteing our onion, garlic, and red pepper flakes for about 2 minutes on medium heat, and then we're going to add in our lemon zest and lemon juice and let that chill for another 2 minutes. Now it's time to add in your half and half, but make sure it's warm before you add it in because the acid from the lemon juice can cause your sauce to curdle and we don't want that to happen. Let your sauce simmer for another 2-3 to three minutes, and then you're going to add in your parmesan cheese, your seasonings, and your parsley. Add in your cooked pasta as well as a half a cup of pasta water and continue to let your sauce simmer until you're happy with the thickness of your sauce, and you're done. There's no cream in carbonara. Ingredients. The world's best carbonara is seasoned guanciale bacon. Meanwhile, fresh pecorino romano cheese is finely grated into a fluff, then mixed with egg yolks and one whole egg to finish. A generous crunch of pepper rains down, turning it into a godlike creation, just like you are. The rigatoni is al dente. The tears of the gods are the final ingredient that makes this creamier than anything you've ever tasted. Just gorgeous. Remember, like I said. One of my favorite dishes growing up was buttered noodles. Now that I'm older, I've perfected it and it's so good. Once you get your water ball in, add in some salt and some chicken bouillon. I didn't measure it, y'all. Just sprinkle it until it looks like it's enough. I'm using spaghetti noodles, but you can use whatever kind of noodles you want. We're going to want to save some of this pasta water for later because it's going to help to thicken our sauce. Melt one stick of butter and throw in some garlic. Once that's melted, add your pasta water back in. Throw in your noodles and mix that up really well. Once you have that mixed, throw in some Parmesan cheese. I didn't measure this either, but just keep putting it until it looks like it's enough. Here I added some garlic powder, parsley, and more chicken bouillon. If your sauce is too thick, just add some more water. I'm gonna serve this with baked chicken and a salad. Happy Saturday, y'all. Here is how you make this Michelin star recipe at home. Ingredients. Gucci loved this recipe so much, they made four restaurants to serve it. Heavy cream and a splash of chicken broth is simmered on a low flame. Parmigiano cheese is layered in and whisked until the winds of passion make it royally smooth, just like you are. Now for the tortellini. Oh, cook in the chicken broth for only one minute and combine with the cream sauce, mixing it until it turns into something just gorgeous. I only accept extra large pasta shapes from now on, especially drenched in my spinach jalapeno pesto. I have this pasta that's been left over from a little TV shoot I had to do. Let's have some fun. This is no ordinary pasta, so this is no ordinary sauce. We're gonna boil some spinach, and once that's done, add in your pasta to that same water with a ton of salt. Blend up your spinach with the scallion bottom, some jalapenos, garlic, almonds, salt, pepper, and good quality olive oil until it's nice and smooth. Add that to your giant fusilli, along with some pasta water, no waste here and this is where all the flavor is marvel at its size and beauty and then get your face steam on plate it up take out your hair because this is drama and then garnish with scallions yum mm -mm -mm. there ain't no basil in here tonight's dinner is vodka pasta let's make it it's one of my favorite dinners and it's so easy to make Chop up one medium onion, mince up four cloves of garlic. Check out this trick, smash your garlic with a knife and it just opens up. 
Well, I'm doing five because I love garlic. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Three tablespoons of butter, olive oil, your onion, your garlic, red pepper flakes, and salt and pepper. And cook this until your onions are translucent. It should be about seven to 10 minutes. Mmm, looking good. Turn off your heat, and we're gonna be adding half a cup of vodka. And then turn your heat to low medium, and we are going to let the vodka cook out for about 15 minutes. And I always see comments asking about, do you need to put the vodka in it? Yes, it gives it the flavor. Yes, your child can eat this. The vodka evaporates, but it gives it the flavor. So you do need to add the vodka into it. Mmm, vodka is cooking out. It smells so good. Um, you can start boiling your pasta now. I'm going to be using this kind. I love shell pasta because then the sauce gets like inside of the shell and it makes it like extra saucy. But you could use penne, spiral, whatever kind you'd like. I'm also going to air fry some of this five cheese Texas toast. I got this at Aldi's. And now you could see that the vodka is cooked out. We are going to add a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And we're gonna let this simmer for five minutes. I'm adding some more pepper, salt, and red pepper flakes. And now turn your heat on low. And we're adding in one cup of heavy whipping cream. And you're gonna slowly add this and mix at the same time. And once it is fully mixed, you're gonna bring the sauce to a simmer one last time. Once your pasta is done, drain the water and you can add it to the sauce. And plate and serve. And I'm topping it with some Parmesan and some parsley and some more red pepper flakes. Mmm, that was good. This is the forbidden pesto. Ingredients. Arugula was forbidden in ancient Rome as it was used as a love potion. Roasted pine nuts, garlic, pecorino and parmigiano cheese and a squeeze of lemon. Pure temptation. Just like you are. We tossed the linguine in al dente, then combined the ingredients of passion itself. Slowly, massage while whispering your lover's name. Just gorgeous. This is the most flavorful pasta I've ever made. I'm seriously telling you it's to die for. Today we're not gonna be in a hurry at all. Just vibe out, relax. Why are you mad? Whenever I'm making a heavier pasta, I like to use a lean cut of meat. And in this case, we're just using some chicken tenderloins. This is like the bottom attachment piece of the chicken breast. And I prefer it so much over the rib meat. I'm just gonna lightly spray it with a little avocado oil. I'm gonna simply start by using my favorite Cajun seasoning, the spicy slap your mama. And as you already know, I like to get as generous as it can get. We're gonna put on our trusty gloves and give these a nice little toss. And obviously, if you'd like, you could remove these tendons. But I'm too lazy and if my pasta don't crunch, I don't want to eat lunch. It's just not that deep to me. This pan is set on a medium high. I'm just gonna toss in the chicken. For now, we're gonna <coughs> Oh my gosh. For now, we're gonna simply cook them <coughs> seven for now we're gonna cook them. <coughs> oh my goodness. For now, we're gonna simply cook them about 75% of the way. You don't wanna touch them until they start getting crusty on the sides like you. And then when they lightly peel off, they should be beautiful. And don't come back here telling me the chicken was dry. That means you simply overcooked it. And to be extremely technical, I'm gonna pull the chicken out at around 155. Yes, they're still slightly raw on the inside, but trust me, you're gonna see why later. Don't wash your pan and set it to a side. This is where all the fun begins. It's time to introduce some major flavor. You can easily hand chop all the ingredients I'm about to use. But today's theme is lazy, and I'm starting off with a red bell pepper, some white onion, a handful of heartburn, as much jalapeno opinions you want it to be spicy, a cute little shallot. I'm adding a roasted red bell pepper just for the fact that I can't find Calibrian chilies. And to finish, we do some sun-dried tomatoes. I'm telling you, you can easily use a knife to chop up all these ingredients, but look how easy this is gonna be. This is not a paste or a spread, so go nice and slow and just rough chop them. Scrape down the sides a couple times. This consistency is what I'm looking for. So the chicken is cooked and the vegetables are prepped. This is a perfect time to start cooking your pasta. I always have the pan warming up in the back as I make the recipe. The water should be as salty as a well-seasoned soup. For optimal results, you wanna use some linguine. Here's a cool trick. You see how they're beautifully bundled up like this? Give the whole mixture a nice little twist and then drop them into your water. They'll naturally funnel in and not stick. It's time to reintroduce that seasoned pan. I'm gonna do a light layer of avocado oil and then I'm gonna go in with about three fourths of that mixture. I wanna start cooking it through without burning it. This simply needs a pinch of salt for now. You might ask, when is my pasta done cooking? After six, seven minutes, I want you to actually try it. If you feel like it needs one to two more minutes, that's the perfect time to remove the pasta. That means when you add it to the sauce, it's gonna absorb all that flavor and it's gonna turn into a sponge and make your pasta that much better. This on 
the other hand, it's still hard. When the vegetables are slightly wilted through and it smells like experience in your kitchen, we go in with a generous amount of heavy cream. If his color don't change, no flavor was gained. This is a perfect opportunity to test for salt levels. And I personally like to add a little bit more Cajun and bring this to a light bubble. Go easy on the salt because we are gonna be grating some Parmesan cheese. Honestly, I don't even know how much to tell you to add. Just add enough until everything is nice, thick, and cohesive. It's time for our linguine to go in. Always, always, always save your pasta water. We're gonna feel it out, but we're gonna start with a little bit. When you cook pasta, it releases starch. That's why the water is murky. Starch is a thickening agent which helps bring everything together. Honestly, this looks insane already. I don't know if you forgot about the chicken, but I definitely did not. They've cooled down and rested, and I'm just gonna chop them up into bite-sized pieces. Eh, just like this. One last burst of oil. That last fourth of that blended vegetable. When they've lightly softened up and almost started caramelizing, I'm gonna add in that cut of chicken. Just a tiny bit of butter. Actually sensational. We need to finish with cilantro, which negates all those calories. And as we grate Parmesan cheese, we have final product. The final verdict, and as always, Bismillah. Oh my goodness. Seriously, it's not as heavy as you'd think. Every single bite is crazy. There is not one doubt you won't fall in love. This crunchy salmon pasta is just gorgeous. Ingredients. Let's start by creating an infusion of unsalted butter and fresh thyme. Salmon goes in with a pinch of salt, a scrunch of pepper, and a splash of heavy cream. Now for the pesto. We blend basil, pecorino and parmigiano cheese, garlic and pistachios, and whisper some Italian words with passion to it. Extra virgin olive oil and a squeeze of lemon complete this love potion. Blend until silky smooth with an edge of rebel, just like you are. Linguine falls in al dente, pesto follows, and the pasta gods shed their tears of happiness while it all comes together into a feast in their honor. Finally, crown with toasted breadcrumbs. Let's make baked feta pasta mac and cheese, and let's make it spanakopita style. Add two blocks of feta to the center of a casserole dish. Then pour in a pound of dry macaroni or your small pasta of choice along with four cups of half and half and two cups of water. Add a nice size sprinkle of kosher salt, then give it a little bit of a stir. Next, drizzle your feta with some extra virgin olive oil and crack some fresh black pepper over top. Then pop in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. When it comes out, you know the drill. Break up the feta and start mixing everything together. I only added four cups of liquid before I put it in the oven and I needed to add more, so that's why I told you to add six. Add two cups of Parmesan cheese now, or you can add it at the beginning phase as well. Give that a stir, then add a bunch of spinach. You can add fresh or frozen, just make sure frozen is well drained and warmed up. Next, add your filo dough topping. I will show you how to do this in another video. Then just break in and enjoy. Where else can I take this trend? 